let's begin the episode the way it's supposed to begin, right? Actually, you know what? One more time because I did it for the second time now. Oh, there you go. That's four. Okay, I got it. I got it. Baby Minta says, lol, you forgot. Lol? <laughs> lol, you forgot. Melia again like so Johnny can see. Yes, I did forget about the Champions League full feet we have to put melia in i'm sorry but welcome guys to a new episode of the aston villa career mode actually hey hey assistant coach what what am i saying hey hey assistant coach how are you guys doing it's me Johnny sports with the most butchered intro of all time i hope you guys had a good time just seeing me completely confused there for the first minute of this video but welcome guys into the aston villa career mode and pain oh god i'm actually red um welcome 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 we are currently in a seventh position with aston villa after 10 games we are on 16 points guys it's not bad it's not great it's not amazing it's not terrible we are currently in the seventh spot not too far away from the top four we are basically five points behind liverpool we can do it i believe that this team can get into the top four this season but at the same time i do believe that we have some massive opponents coming up in this episode leicester is the next opponent we're going to be playing away from home to step into the ground and try and beat the foxes if you guys are happy that you're seeing another aston villa career mode episode today make sure to give it some support by hitting that like button on this one that'd be very much appreciated guys go ahead and do so thank you so much if you are doing it right now and uh yeah subscribe if you're new a lot of you guys are not subscribed yet so make sure to subscribe and let's get into the epi a couple of comments that we have to go through in today's episode by the way this is episode 13 apparently that is 25 in man city language are you liking that bottom half of the league table? You enjoying that? I hope you do. Stay there. No one likes you. So in the last episode, we had an issue with the um, results in a simulation game. We were 2-0 up against Dynamo Kiev, I believe. And then we jumped to the result with only like 25 minutes to go. And it, it came back with a 2-2 draw, which just was a disgusting uh, thing to see. And there's a comment coming in from Erkin John and he says, Danny, uh, be patient. Stop jumping to the results, man. Just when, just when you like sip a tea when it's hot you sip carefully and be patient if you're not patient drink beer or vodka all right man all right all right i'm sorry i'm gonna be more patient with the simulations from now on i'm just gonna chill unless we have a three goal lead come on three goal lead i can jump the result come on man i'm not conceding three goals am i but it's uh leicester Let's talk about it, guys. That's the team that's up against us. And then we have Dynamo Kiev coming back again. Hopefully, we can beat them again. But look at that schedule, man. I feel like Jurgen Klopp, we have two games in this week. And then next week, straight away, we have another two games. So four games in two weeks. That's a lot of games to play. And we could come out of this with a bunch of injuries. But the good thing is, we don't really necessarily have big games in this month. So we'll potentially make it over to the Porto game. At least that's how far I want to get through this episode. To kind of get closer to December, in which we have some big games coming up. And then obviously the January transfer window to make some deals uh, for the future of our team. Now, of course... This next game is very important, as Conrad Lima has already realized he wants to play more. We have another monthly scout report coming in. And these, ooh, ooh, 875k. I'm sorry, but I can't say no to that. I got to sign that young man into the squad. And that one I wanted to reject, but I did sign him for no reason. And that one is going to be rejected as well. So one decent talent coming out of that one. Evan's loan has been rejected. Of course, these loans just don't go through the way they should. Um, it is a very, very annoying part of career mode that I just don't like. If I'm accepting transfers, then um, we need to get um, get the players gone from the team. But yeah, man, it's it's very disappointing to see that that type of stuff is still happening within career mode. Just let me give my uh, young players some loan time somewhere else. Uh, Grealish is now going to be in the starting lineup again. Last episode, we had to use Wesley and Cantwell, who did all right. But well, it's obviously not as good as our usual duo up top. It is Grealish now returning. Leicester. Let's see what we can do. Apparently in real life, Pep Guardiola is extremely interested in um, Jack Grealish. Let's talk about that more once we gump, uh, jump into the game. Not gump into the game. Jump into it. <laughs> Lately, we've been picking up too many results that I just personally don't like. We got to be doing better, guys. We got to be stepping up and getting some three points. 
and hopefully today we can do that um i am hoping to see us score a bunch of goals in this one and most importantly try and defend properly our defense has been tough lately we haven't been doing too well and there's one comment specifically talking about our defense here is jules myers and he says johnny the problem of goals is just not the defenders it is the whole team strategy you play when you lose the ball with watkins and half of the uh, of the other team you let the man with the ball walk too easily to the defenders and then the defender has to step in and you're ruined, I'm going to say. Um, so you have to make sure that if Watkins loses the ball, you press with the whole team and keep the field as small as possible. You have to make sure the pass lines are covered. Uh, this way, you will put much less burden on the shoulders of your defenders and you will score much easier. I do know that pressure after losing the ball uh, takes a lot of stamina. That's why you have to substitute, why you have substitutes in your team and you can train everyone to grow a lot of stamina. Now, here's the deal. He's not wrong. Yes, um, technically, a lot of times we do lose the ball and we do get countered. And um, yeah, it might be a good shout to not play balanced anymore, but to play on press after possession loss. Because once we do lose the ball in the attack with some dribblings, with some passing play, it might help to put players like Douglas Luiz and Conrad Lima, especially, to push up on the midfielders in the center, just waiting for the passes to come from the opponent's defense into their midfield. So we're going to change that into press after possession loss and see how it goes. It does cost a lot more stamina, but it could be very beneficial to our results in the future. So we're going to try that out right now. Thank you guys so much for uh, leaving a like on that comment as well, helping me out as always. So let's talk about the Jack Grealish thing. Apparently, if Man City want to buy Jack Grealish, they will have to pay up to 100 million. Now, Jack Grealish is a great football player, but 100 million, man, we're, we're talking numbers of world-class talents. Um, uh, we're talking numbers that, I, I mean, 100 million is just too insane, isn't it? But then again, it's an English player, so I guess that's another value that goes into it that adds at least another 40 million to the price tag in terms of that deal. But he has just signed an, an extension, I believe, with Aston Villa. And that is probably the main reason as to why he would cost that much. But yeah, I just... 100 million, I just don't see it, man. And I think Aston Villa would accept something around 60, 70 potentially. And Jack Grealish at Manchester City, I just don't know where he would really play. Like what type of position he would take over within that squad. Because obviously he's not going to be an attacking midfielder replacing the likes of Kevin De Bruyne. He, he would be playing down the wings in the position where Sterling is at the moment, in the position where down the right-hand side, Bernardo Silva ain't doing as much anymore, potentially something like that. But I just don't see it happening. It is, the, it is in the rumor mill right now. And do you guys believe it's going to happen? 100 million for Jack Grealish? That just sounds a little bit too outlandish to me. Even though I freaking love the guy, he's a great football player. I, I don't see it happening for that amount. Axel Witzel as a signing for this Leicester team sounds like a really good one, man. Just imagine Ndidi and Axel Witzel together in a starting lineup for Leicester. Conrad Lima had the ball there for a sec, but we lost it straight away. That is Ndidi. They have some space now down the center. We have options to attack them and we do so. Nicely done. Now, Conrad Lima is going to be looking for Bertrand Traore's run in behind. That is a quality ball from Lima. Here's Bertrand Traore now. He's going to cut back in. He's going to find someone in the middle. It's going to be Jack Grealish and Jack Grealish is going to bang it top ins. It is another goal for the man with the number 10 on his back. The captain of Aston Villa. The man who has carried us for years now. He is back into the starting lineup. Great move by Bertrand Traore. Cuts back in, finds Grealish and Kaspar Schmeichel has no chance in saving that one unlucky buddy you tried your best but you did not succeed in the comments down below i would love to know one specific thing in today's episode guys i haven't asked you this at all so far but i would love to know what you guys think who is your favorite player in this career mode so far who is the one that you are most excited to see perform I'm assuming that a lot of people might say Ollie Watkins and Jack Grealish, but I want to see if someone has any different thoughts as well. Um, so let me know in the comments down below who is your favorite player so far in this career mode and who do you think is giving you the most joy uh, while seeing the gameplay. Now, we have moved the center back out of position, which once again leads to some space given, but Konza returns to his spot perfectly fine. And here we go now. This time, we're going to use Anthony's pace. Over the top with Douglas Luiz, Watkins in the center. 
Watkins is in a great spot. Going to bring it back in. And that is Jack Grealish just about missing out on the ball. A 2-0 lead would make our life so much easier. The second half begins as Leicester are going to be pursuing at least one goal in this half. With obviously the likes of Silimani up top. They are struggling right now because they are lacking pace to get in behind. If they had Jamie Vardy in a starting lineup, it would be a whole different story. But we're going to be using our pace now to get past Axel Witzel. It is too easy for Anthony. Anthony, I see Grealish just waiting, but Witzel actually catches up, which is quite impressive. And the manager glitch is back again. Things you love to see. Watkins, come on, Watkins. And I just want to score one header with him. Just one header with Watkins this season at the near post. That's just one thing I want to, I want to be able to achieve. But I, I just don't seem to be ever... Uh, doing that i'm trying to switch players but it doesn't let me switch to my cdm so i have to switch to my center backs that is also one of the main reasons as to why you never really see me defend with my center defensive midfielders when it comes to counter attacks because switching to them is abysmal and uh, ea are not fixing it yet it seems like player switching doesn't seem to be an issue enough for them to go ahead and change it so far but for me switching to my cdms is like one of the most impossible tasks within this game. Here goes Bacchan Traore now. We gotta stop. We gotta take our time. We're gonna play it inside. Grealish plays it in. We get lucky. Watkins, left foot. He can do it on his left, on his right. It doesn't matter, but sadly that time, the accuracy is not there. Oh, please, no! They hit the post. Suleimani not capable of scoring in that position. Now, let's see. Our team has done stamina-wise after 64 minutes with this tactic. You can definitely tell there's a lot more stamina being used in certain positions, but it's not as bad as I thought it could be. So Douglas Luiz coming off, Nakamba joining in. Um, Todd Cantwell, why have him in already? He was great lately. Watkins hasn't done too much in this game. So we're going to put on Wesley here. Let's see what he can do. And then we're also going to be bringing on... Um, I'm going to trust my youngster, man. I'm going to put in Rutherford down that left-hand side. I like him a lot. Let's see what he can achieve in this game. Leicester now coming down that right-hand side. A pass that just isn't accurate. They've made a change to their attack, though. Um, Silimani has been taken off. So that's a sign of them realizing that the pace was just lackluster. Here goes Wesley, though. Can we play it into him? He's offside. It was a good chance, though. I should have played it a little bit quicker and we could have scored from that one. Another change coming in now for Leicester as well. They're constantly changing to make sure that they can get the best out of this game within the last few minutes here. Oh, that's a good ball. Stop him. Stop him, Matty Cash. I believe in you. Go on, Matty. Go on, Matty. Let's go, Matty. Put in those tackles, son. Let's go, man. Beautifully done. Bashan Traore. Konrad Leimer. Now looking for Wesley. Wesley. As Grealish in support. Finds him. Grealish now pushing on. Grealish will stop. We'll find Lima again. Wesley now in a good position. Wesley passes it. Bacchan Traore. It's the finish that we needed. But not the save that we wanted to see. It is a great save. Now Wesley at the near post. Show Watkins how it's done. Show him how it's done. At least he gets onto it. Now Kamba now moving forward with purpose. There is Wesley. Can we make it 2-0? With only a few minutes to go. Wesley... Let's go, son. Let's go, son. He makes it happen. It's 2-0. Wesley has scored. Aston Villa are not giving away points in this game. Leicester might be in the first position in the league, but we are the team on form. And Wesley is a massive part of this team at this stage. I'm absolutely loving him as a super sub to come into our games. Hopefully, he's going to be happy with that position in our squad. He's asking for more and more playtime, and that might cause us some issues moving forward because obviously Watkins is the undisputed number one in the team. But seen his performances and having scored five goals so far within 10 games that's pretty impressive Conrad, beautiful come on nakamba come on here we go we can do one more we can do one more i do trust in this team getting one more wesley oh his finish doesn't come off Grealish and a good save from kasper schmeichel there wesley can you get a two can you get two mate can you get two he can't but that is the end of the game. I believe we should be done right here. We're not conceding in the late minutes here. That's not going to happen. We're going to defend this with our lives. And the ref blows the whistle as Aston Villa pick up the three points that were necessary to show that we're not a team to get draws all the time, to take losses. We are the team 
that you have to look at and realize if you play against us, you're going to lose points. You're going to drop points if you don't pay attention. And right here, defense of Leicester was just not on point today. And our attack with the likes of Jack Grealish and Wesley have done exactly what we needed to pick up the three points and continue our pursuit for the top four positions in the league. Let's freaking go, lads. For some reason, um, oh, my manager rating is dropping massively because I have to sign three players from Asia. What? What's that all about? What type of... Oh my God, that's brand exposure? Really? You're asking me to... Oh man, I am forced to sign three players from Asia. Now that's, that's weird. That's a really weird objective to have. But I guess it's something that we have to do because my manager rating is now red, bro. It's red. They don't even care about continental or domestic success. All they care about is signing three players from Asia. Can I sign them now? Let's see if we can find three players from Asia right now. Um, hopefully, uh, we can find someone. If not, we're going to uh, keep on dropping points, and that's not a good thing. All right, so I've put a couple of Asian players onto our um, transfer hub, and it is Kangin Lee. We have him. We have Takefusa Kubo currently out at Real Madrid, coming back from his loan. Uh, we have Tomiyasu, and we have Arzani from Australia, and then we also have Abe here, who could be joining into the team. So um, I, I don't quite know what to do with these now um i am struggling here obviously some of these are a bit higher rated and i don't know how to fit them in now i wonder can i loan these players in that's my question first of all we're going in for abe for a short-term loan are they happy with a 50 percent split they are happy with a 50 percent split so we're going to be getting abe into the team now, I want to see if a loan deal counts as a signing. That's something I want to see. If it doesn't, I'm not going to continue because I'm not going to sign three players from Asia um, because I don't need anyone at the moment. So it's just silly. But we're going to jump in there and see. Brand exposure still says zero out of three. I think he has to accept, right? I think he has to accept the deal. And then we know if it's going to happen or not. So... Uh, let's wait a little bit and see if Abe is going to be happy about joining our team, yes or no. As we are waiting for Abe to decide if he wants to join on loan, yes or no, we have Dinamo Kiev coming up. Now, once again, we're going to sim this with the main team and hope we pick up a good result. Three points, obviously crucial because we already got a draw against them, which is just not good enough. So we're going to sim this and see how it goes. Has to be a win. There's no way around it. Our team should technically be much better in their squad they have Tsigankov though camera hello hello camera camera come on man come back all right Tsigankov is a player that we used in our Newcastle career mode at some point he was a really really good player and still probably is a very good player for career mode so if you guys are looking for a fast winger who can have an impact on your team that's a good shot for you but here goes the game here goes the run oh come on you gotta finish that that was Jack Grealish, wasn't it? He has to score that, man. That was a good chance. So we have another chance right here. Grealish, Watkins, and that's the goal I saw. Watkins scores. He knew that Wesley is on his tails. Wesley is showing some good performances, and Watkins has to step it up. When we do see a player coming off the bench and scoring goals regularly, you need the main striker to do even more than that because it's the same situation as with Jota and Firmino. Obviously, Firmino is a class player, but at the same time, we all know how much on form Jota is. And if you have to make the decision in between the two, you kind of have to go for Jota right now. But uh, talking about that, glad that Firmino had scored on the weekend. Uh, good to see that because he had so many chances and just didn't get it over the line. But here goes Dinamo, Kiev trying to come back into the game. They are doing a lot of passing play outside our box, but never really getting into a dangerous position. And that is just our team doing well enough with the defensive uh, back line. Just making sure they don't get passed. Well done, lads. Go on. Ah, oh, Jack, 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 Jack. That's two chances now that you're wasted. Watkins. Anthony. Bangs it cross goal on his left foot. We're not going to skip it this time. This time I'm going to be patient and sip on my tea. Golasso. Traore has scored as well. 3 0 up, lads. 72nd minute. Get in, boys. Well done. That is our team definitely winning this matchup. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna jump to the result. There's no way. 
they make it 3-3. There we go. 3-0. Big victory. Three points for our team. Get in, lads. Abe has agreed to the loan deal. So there we go. The player will join us at the start of the transfer window and will return to FC Barcelona as soon as his loan expires. And then we have the deal for Fernandez agreed. Um, it is a player that we tried to loan out. Cardiff is a great team to go to for him. He's 64 rated now. One of our biggest talents within the squad. So we're going to accept that one. And let's see if now that Abe has accepted the loan deal, if that has affected our um, objectives at all. Does that even add up or do we have to, si we have to sign them on a permanent deal? I'm not doing that. I'm sorry. I just dropped down my, my managerial points. I don't care, man. As long as I don't drop down below like 55, I'm just going to keep on trucking on because there's no point. Like genuinely, what's the point in forcing me to sign three players from a specific area? It's just pointless. Never seen anything as stupid as that. But um, we're going to continue. We're going to jump into the game against Derby right now. Derby is a team now within the Premier League, I believe. And uh, yeah, they are currently in a 20th position, not looking too good. And we're going to give our reserves team some playtime here and have some fun. Let's go, Derby. Let's see what you got against our team right here. Another simulation coming up. Todd Cantwell and Wesley here to prove themselves again. I am expecting Cantwell and Wesley trying to prove that they deserve a spot in the starting lineup in this matchup. It's a 20th position team in the league. And that should technically mean that our squad is going to run through this squad. There's no way they should have a chance. Now, the only player that I really know here is um, Drinkwater, the man that used to play for Leicester and then moved to Chelsea for a huge amount and never really had any playtime. And then Buchanan is another one that I can remember, but that's pretty much it as we're through now. On goal, pass. No, he doesn't pass it. He takes the shot himself. Todd Cantwell gets us up 1-0. Great, great stuff right there from him. Oh, come on. We gave away a penalty right there. That's ridiculous, man. Let's jump in into this one. It's going to be a penalty given away. And we're going to try and save it ourselves, guys. Let's see if we can save it. Yes or no. It is Melier now coming into the game. Melier. Oh, he hits the post. That's unlucky, buddy. I'm going to play this attack out. And if we do get a goal, we get a goal. If we don't, we don't. And we just back out of this simulation. Wesley. Come on, Wesley. Ah, that's unlucky. We're going to back. We're going to go back into the simulation. They missed it. Unlucky, lads. Great run. Come on. Someone has to take a shot, man. You can't just play it around like that. Let's go. There it is. Tune it up. Madueke with his first goal for Aston Villa. Get in, son. Well done. I needed him to do well. It's a new signing. The English wonder kid has now finally gotten his own goal there. GG's, man. Uh, I wanted to see him score and he has done exactly that. Whenever I used him, he felt actually all right. So hopefully he can continue performing like that for our reserves team, which is about to pick up a big victory right here. Oh my God. Did you see the passing play there? Oh boys, that was disgusting. Oh, wow. The passing play on our team in that position was just unreal. We're going to jump to the result right here. It's a 3-0 victory for Aston Villa. Completely deserved. And it is goals from Wesley, Madweke and Cantwell. All three showcasing why they should be considered for the first team as well in the future. Eduardo Caresma gave away a penalty, but we still made sure it didn't go in. And uh, clean sheet. Another clean sheet in the Premier League. Nice to see that. All right, guys. Now we have a game against Brighton, the 15th place team in the league. We are currently in on 22 points, sixth in the league ahead of Arsenal. Now, after this game, we have a game coming up against the likes of um, uh, Porto in the Champions League group stages, which is a matchup that we have to try and win in order to get the second place within our group. So... Wesley and Catwell, who are now both 80 rated, are going to lead our team going into the game against Brighton and hopefully picking up a good result. And uh, what is this? Captaincy for Brighton fixture. Who do they suggest actually as a leader? Grealish, of course. Uh, Fernandez loan has gone through. He's out on a two-year loan deal to Cardiff. Hopefully he'll have a good time over there and we'll recall him when the time does come. Now it's up against Brighton. Let's see how this one goes for our squad in a simulation um, we're going to sim this one regularly, not quick sim again, and hoping that our team can get a good result once again. I'm very impressed by Todd Cantwell and Wesley and their ability to score goals and also get assists along the way. Especially Cantwell in that camp position is doing a really good job so far. Oh no! 
Brighton have already scored with Livaja. Now, I'm going to give my team until the 45th minute. If they don't score until that point, we're going to jump in there ourselves. And if anyone remembers my old career mode content, at some point we had Livaja in one of our videos. I think it might have even been a player of review, if I'm not mistaken, or a sprint to glory or some sort of that. He was class. He was really, really good. Or Livaja, is pro it probably is because he's not, um, he's not from Spain or anything, where uh, we could say Livaja. But um, yeah, we're going to see how our team can do here in uh, a position where they are not comfortable. It is going to be potentially them attacking and getting a second. Now, we got to step it up, boys. Come on now, Wesley and Cantwell. You can do better than this. And I know it. And you know it. Wesley was through. We didn't play into him. That's a big mistake. Who is number eight? Ferguson. You got to play that pass, mate. Oh my god, we're 2-0 down. We're going to jump in right now, guys. This is not acceptable. Brighton and Ove Albion are beating us 2-0. That cannot happen. We got to do better than that. We're going to take over and see what we can achieve in this game. And this is going to be the second game of today. So don't expect another matchup after this one. The Porto match will have to be delayed until tomorrow's episode because this is now the one that we have to fix. The result that we have to turn around if possible as Todd Cantwell gets stuck in our opponents. Here goes Ferguson now this time. Can he find the right pass? Ferguson does try and find it. Doesn't actually get the ball to Madueke. No way. We're not going to make it three, are we? No! Come on! That's not a foul, ref! You have to be kidding me! <sighs> Delore is going to take it. Delore hits it. Left side, 3-0. We're 3-0 down against Brighton. I cannot believe what I'm seeing right now. There's space in the middle. Come on. Come on now. Please. Ah, oh, please. Please, please, please. Vamangituka, bro. You're much better than that. That's a disgrace. Ah, oh, mate. You're kidding me, man. Come on. I'm putting in a great tackle there. Lamte pushes out and gets the ball. I'm switching players. Oh, that's a great ball inside. It's 4-0, guys. We're going to lose this game as well. We're going to lose this game. we got to give it up. It's 4-0. <sighs> that, that was not good. That's a terrible result for Aston Villa. We lost 4-0 against Brighton, lads. Terrible. Terrible. I mean, just look at the result that we just had against Derby. Another team that was struggling. And then this is the result that we get against another team that's struggling. Like... Very inconsistent. And Karejma has given away two penalties now in two games. Not too happy with his performances, even though it's not technically his fault, I guess, when uh, we put in that tackle. I thought it was a good tackle, but apparently he's gone through the legs of his opponent to get there. Wesley has gone up to an 81, by the way. He has grown now once again. Him and Cantwell are having a good time right now in that position, but our team now needs to refocus on the Paris Saint-Germain game or the Porto game. That's the reason why we did not go ahead and uh, play our main team. Wesley and Grealish are kind of stuck with their growth for now, but we're going to get their form upgraded, hopefully. Kekana, definitely not a, um, a deal for a loan to buy. I should have delegated, my mistake. We're going to uh, ask for a regular loan deal here. My manager rating keeps on dropping. It's now on 68. Do you guys think I should sign those three Asian players just to make sure we keep our job? Because it's the only high priority that the team has. So let me know if you guys think I should buy those three Asian players in the January transfer window, which will probably cost us all of our transfer budget, unless we just go ahead and buy three Asian players that are very low rated and we don't really, um, yeah, we don't really have to bother. I mean, I could just go into there now and sign them as free agents and release them, I guess, but I don't know if that's the right move to make. For example, if I sign this guy, Naoya Ando, if we sign him now, does he join us straight away, I wonder? Okay, so we have now signed him. Let's see if that is the right way to go about it. Are we just going to sign three um, free agents? He's a 56 rated 18 year old, which again, isn't as impressive, but um, let's see. Yeah, our manager rating has gone up. It has gone up to a 71 right now because that is exactly what they want us to do. Do you want me to just go ahead and sign three free agents that are from Asia? Let me know in the comments down below, guys. Should we just do that? Or should we actually try and sign some actual decent players from Asia? Let me know 
I am very interested to, to know your opinion. Now, in today's episode, let's do a little bit of a recap. We had a good game to start off with, and it didn't go too well. We picked up a victory against Dinamo Kiev, which I'm very happy about. So we needed those three points in the group stages. And once we beat Porto here, we are secured to go through into the next round. So hopefully we can do that. Porto actually got a draw against PSG, which is a bit scary if you consider that we completely uh, got destroyed by Neymar and Mbappe. So Porto seems to be the better team. Aston Villa on the seventh position with 22 points, but only three points into the top four. So the gap has gotten smaller, but our position has remained the same. All the big teams ahead of us, apart from uh, Manchester United and Leicester City, if you swap those two out, the regular top six would be ahead of us. Leicester currently still fighting for that first position. Liverpool have regained control of the league with Manchester City also chasing down that spot and uh, us having conceded 20 goals now in this season is not a good thing. I mean, we can look at the fan objectives right now. We are on 0 out of 15 for the fantastic fullbacks, which is not a good thing. Um, Anthony is doing all right, but not great. He has to score more goals to be able to compete with Martial. The youngsters are actually on 7 out of 15 now, which is very impressive. The future is on 10 out of 15, which I did not expect at all. So we might have to upgrade that to 20, that threshold that we have to reach. Uh, not happening is now, on, uh, before the episode started, on 16 out of 40. Now we're on 20 out of 40, and that's just not good enough. So, going back to the league table, happy with the fact that we are closer to the top four, but very unhappy with the fact that we have lost against Brighton. The second team should have done better. Lots of things to do before we get into the January transfer window. You guys do know we don't have that much money to spend, so potentially we would have to let go of someone in order to make improvements within the squad. But thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great freaking day. See you next time when it's back with Aston Villa. Take care and peace.